Church to me is the gathering together of brothers and sisters and growing growing and learning to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the community. Church to me is a community, first and foremost, um, and it's a shared connection around um, the love of our God. Church to me is a place that you can build community and grow relationships and, and strengthen your faith and have those sort of robust, sort of deep conversations with people. Church to me means that I've always got a community in my corner. Uh, through church, I've been opened to a lot of conversations and discussions with all different kinds of people. And I find that through those sorts of discussions, that's how I grow the most. And I'll always be thankful for that. Cool. Welcome to church, everyone. Um, it's really exciting that some of us are actually in the building doing church tonight. Um, we're very excited because we have Karen here to talk to us. Um, but Summer, what does church mean to you? Well, personally, church means a community and a place where we can experience things together as a shared knit of people that we build in this community. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, when Karen posed it to us uh, late last week sometime, um, what does church mean to you? And I was pondering this a little bit as well. Um, and something that came up a lot uh, in those little clips, there was um, this idea of place and shared community. Um, and for me, church really is, it is a place, it is a building, um, but it's also part of my identity, um, which is linked to my faith. But more than that, all three of those things sort of inform each other in a different way. Um, and in thinking about that, I was also um, thinking about how that is sort of a parallel to um, the way Indigenous Australians have a relationship with the land and their spirituality and their faith. Um, so I'm going to do the acknowledgement of country, um, and then we're going to move on to the next part of the service. This is God's land. Many have gone before who have honoured God by caring for the land in the ways they have lived and in the stories that they have shared. We give thanks for the Garingai people who have held as sacred the duty of protecting the land and living in harmony with it. May God honour and bless them now and to eternity.
so it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Karen Mitchell Lampert. Can I come say hi? Hello. <laughs> Okay, move over this way. Okay, move over a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Okay, all right. Cool. Um, So I might just, for people that aren't super familiar with Karen, I'll just ask a couple of questions. Um, Sure. First of all, um, what do you do during the week? Uh, At the moment, I'm working from home a lot. (laughs) Uh, But I am the director of Pulse, which is all things to do with children, family, youth and young adults for the Uniting Church in New South Wales and ACT. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and what's the most exciting thing, other than working from home, uh, that has happened to you during lockdown? We bought a house in Tasmania. <laughs> it was very random. So, you know, that's probably the most exciting thing that's happened. Yeah, I don't know if I could top that. <laughs> no, it's pretty random. Yeah. Um, so, last question. Yes. What's tonight about? Do you want to just explain... So, you know, I'm not really one for traditional ways of doing things. I kind of like to mix it up quite a bit. And so when I was asked to come and preach here, I asked, can I actually have the whole service and can we just muck around with it and see how we go? And so I've asked uh, Jonti and Summer if they would uh, collaborate with me. So we're doing an experiment with interactive online worship. And so instead of one big sermon, we're going to have a series of little micro sermons and there's going to be ways for people to interact and yeah it's an experiment so be gracious with us as we see how it goes yeah Yeah, i'm looking forward to it it's gonna be exciting um so the floor's all yours great cool thanks well so part of the idea with these micro sermons is that we're going to connect them i'm going to talk to you about why church matters to me but i'm going to use the way a service is run or kind of the liturgy of the service to help us think about different parts of that. And so normally, like we just had a great song from Jonti, um, it's telling us and reminding us about how great God is. And for me, one of the things that matters about church is that as God's people, we remind each other about what is great about God. So Uh, While I'm chatting to you, they're going to put up on the screen, we're going to do this interactive experiment and we're going to use a Mentimeter and make a word cloud at the same time. So if you've never used it before, you go to www.menti.com and the number that you need to put in is 66128000, so 8000. And what I want you to do, there's two questions to answer there about what do you love about God and where have you seen God this week? And we want everyone to have an opportunity to share their prayer of praise with us and put it up in the word cloud so that we can have a look together about why God matters to us. And so for me, as this kind of first micro sermon, one of the things that really matters about church is that we actually share together about who God is and how great God is. And why that matters is because sometimes when things get dark or when they get hard or when we're getting bored, we can get doubts. And that's really hard. And faith is exactly that. Faith. You kind of you, you have to step out into it. And sometimes those doubts can become really overwhelming. And so for me, one of the things that really matters about church is that as a community, we remind each other about who God is and how God is at work in our world. So we want to hear from you about what is great about God. I can see a couple of words up already. We've got every, God's everywhere. There's rain, which has been fantastic. There's grace. There's a great example of life, friends, challenges. This is great. God's unconditional. God is everywhere and wonderful. So I'm really excited to see all of these words come up. And so we offer these as prayers and reminders to each other that this is who our God is. And this is how we love our God. And so if you're struggling to remember at the moment, just take a minute to have a look at some of those words coming up on the cloud now and just think about that God is present for you. And so us as a community are encouraging each other and reminding each other about who that is. So as we usually in a service, we move kind of from the prayers of praise and, you know, Jonty's done a great song with us that tells us about how great God is. 
we kind of take some time at that point often to think about our confession. We hear it as a prayer of confession. And I wanted to take some time too to think about that. What is a prayer of confession? You know, often we talk about it as the things that I did that I shouldn't have done or the things that I didn't do that I should have done. Um, But actually the prayer of confession is a bit more than that. It's actually a moment to stop and to be humble and to get ourselves ready to hear. And the thing that, one of the other things that matters to me about being church is that it is a space where we're allowed to be our true selves. We are allowed to come and be present with God as we really are. And so we take time to confess and we're going to take, we're going to listen to another song in a minute. We're going to take some time to think about getting ourselves ready to think about those things. And for you, it might be things that you did that you shouldn't have done or things that you forgot that you didn't do. Uh, But I also want you to take this time as a time to really be present and humble and think about how you want to open yourself up to the community to listen and learn together. So I think we're going to have another song at this point. This is a new one. Well, it's a really old one and Jonty's done a great job of fixing it for us. (laughs) Or doing it differently. That's probably a better way to say it. of truth thou hast for me place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free silently now I wait for thee ready my God thy will to see open my Illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may see voices of truth. Thou sendest clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything false will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit. Open my mouth and let me bear Gladly the warm truth everywhere Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready my God thy will to see Open my heart illumine me Spirit divine Spirit Divine Spirit Divine So as you engage with our worship tonight, we invite you as you listen to the readings and as you listen to the reflections that you might want to grab some pens, some paper, some artwork supplies and actually do some reflection yourself and think about uh, what are you hearing God say about why does church matter to you and at the same time as part of what we're doing tonight 
we have Summer, who is actually using the prayers that we have had and the things that you have told us about what matters to you about church. And she's going to be creating her own piece of artwork as we continue on this journey together. And she'll show it to us at the end of the service to help us reflect. So next, we're going to have the Bible reading. So there's two of them tonight. Have a listen and see what you can hear from God. Good evening. Tonight's first reading is taken from Acts 4, verse 32. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. But they shared everything they had. The second reading is taken from Romans 12, verse 1 to 8. A living sacrifice. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each one of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This is the word of the Lord. So what did you hear in those readings? What stood out to you in the different parts of both the readings about what does it mean to be church? We have so many different ideas about church. Often when people talk about church, they often think of the building, like we're in here tonight, or they think about the gathered community of God. The people are actually the church. And I want us to really, I loved how in the introductions with our little Vox Pops, lots of people were talking about church for them was actually about community and about belonging together. And that's one of the key things that stood out for me in these readings, that being church, being Christ's body is actually all of us in together. And that that community isn't going to be the same. What, what God is calling us to hear, the example that we've been given through Jesus, is to be something that is radically different to what we see in our world. In our world, we are encouraged to hang out with our tribe. And our tribe is great. They help us feel good about ourselves. They're people like us. They think like us. They often talk like us or dress like us. And having a tribe to belong to that's the same as us is just such a great blessing when we have that opportunity. But the tribe that God wants us to belong to is a different thing again. This tribe of love actually encourages us to be present with people who are different from us. People who may not wear the same things that we do or speak the way that we do or even think the way that we do. And the thing that brings us together and the thing that is common amongst us is the call of Jesus to be a community of love. And that love is not just meant for our special people who we gather with, that we've kind of got used to and we've got the hang of and we can kind of sort out their quirks. That love is actually a challenge for us to live it out in the whole world. We are called to be a light on a hill, 
a city on a hill that sends light throughout the whole world. And if we are to truly embrace being a community of love, we are able to be that. In recent kind of years, I've taken some time to intentionally engage with the cultures that are different from me in the church. It's been a real blessing of an opportunity to meet people. And I've spent time with people from all different cultural groupings, particularly in Sydney, uh, who worship in the Uniting Church. It wouldn't surprise you to know we don't think the same way. And the other thing that I often find is really interesting is that we will often use the same words but we actually mean something totally different. And when you're sitting across from someone who's from a different culture, it's actually really easy to see that. But I wonder how often we sit amongst our communities and not realise that what we're saying is not the same as what we think that we're saying. And how often that causes conflict and issues amongst us where we don't necessarily be people of peace in that. The call of Jesus is to actually love beyond that, to forgive beyond that, to forgive 70 times 7. This is who the community of God is called to be. This is why we're a city on the hill. This is why we're a light, because the call of that love forces us to go beyond what we would normally go, particularly in this culture that is all about being individuals and hanging only with those like us. The problem with a culture that only does that is that it becomes a world of fear. We become afraid of the others because we don't understand them. But Jesus wants to challenge us to go beyond that and be a community together. And we're all going to be different and we're going to be different parts of the body, but it all matters and it all works to help the world see what God is like and who God is. So we're going to have another song.
next section of our service, I've kind of chunked these things together as trying to help us think about it as a movement. So we take time to listen and to hear, listen to each other. And part of this is I've put the announcements alongside uh, our prayers for others and also our offering because I want to see it as a whole movement that when, as a community of God, one of the key things about this is that we have to be real and honest and share who we are with each other. And so right now you're going to have an opportunity to put in the chat some of the things that you might like to prepare for. And we are going to listen to what's going on here at Taramara, but also think about the things that are going on in our world. And we're going to pray for those things, which for me is about us putting our shoulder to the to those who are suffering and struggling and putting our strength with it. And then we're going to offer ourselves to God in how we do how we share what we have and join in with that community and be God's people together. I think fills up. It's nice to, to be here. Um, I'm not on the screen. How did that work, John? Yeah, I don't know how it did that. <laughs> I am now. Um, and it's nice to only have a tiny part of the service. Uh, and I hope you enjoy these luscious locks that I've got because they're going tomorrow. Um, enjoy them now. Quick announcements. I've got four birthdays for Courtney, for Steve, for Ellen and Peter. Happy birthday. If we've missed your birthday, write it in the comment section so we can wish you happy birthday too. And lastly, the year 12s, uh, be, continue to be praying for them um, as they approach their exams. Uh, and we are having a HSC prayer, well, picnic now. And we can have one big picnic because of the change of rules. It will be on Saturday the 30th of October at 10.30. We just haven't chosen the park yet. Um, and so when we choose that, we will tell you, but it will be definitely Saturday the 30th. Put it in your diary. Come along, support those uh, young adults. Uh, gather around them and pray for them with some great food there. I think that's all. Oh, yes, so the Thanksgiving offering update, if you would like it. Uh, it closes this week, uh, but, yeah, fantastic uh, response. Uh, nearly $14,000 raised in that one-off offering, and we are starting to buy stuff already um, out of that, and it's going to make a difference. Um, if you want to jump in at the last minute, you still can. The details are on the screen. I think that's me done. Uh, who am I handing back to? Prayers. Oh, I'm going to hand over to Rachel for prayer. This is a prayer written by Rex Hunt. O oh, deep mystery, vital centre of our lives, we know your presence is not called up by much speaking. Rather, may we honour your presentness in the absence of noise, in the promise of the morning, in the dancing brightness of the sun. We are struck in awe before the great mystery of the cosmos. We are powerfully moved by a deep concern for our world and our care for one another. May ours be a faith that is more than words and ideals. May ours be a faith of vitality and compassion. We lament that there are many people in the world who are burdened by hunger and pain, by sorrow and anxiety, by violence and loss. May they find comfort and peace, and may their burdens be lifted from them by our actions as peacemakers and doers of justice. May we find it in ourselves today to work toward a better world. May we make use of that energy to take part in the lifting of burdens. May our gratitude find expression in the care for others, both near and far. May we find ways to live and grow on the margins. May we leave behind us a trail of encouragement and hope. We raise before you now also those things on our hearts which we have raised in the comment section. And having spoken much, perhaps too much, now without a word we rest in your eternal presentness. This is our prayer. Amen.
you bring to the body of Christ? How do you fit into that picture? And what would you like to offer to God at the moment? So we have our offering coming, and I think there's going to be some things on the screen. If you'd like to make a donation, you can make a donation to Taramara. <laughs> okay? And uh, I think there was also a special donation that we were talking about for HSC people as well, and I think... And some is going to introduce that in the moment. But as we kind of take time to offer this, I'd invite you, if you want to do something, whether it's about putting your hands out, whether it's about standing up, what is it that you can do that can be a physical way of saying, God, I'm yours and I offer myself and my gifts, however big, however small, how many times I screw it up, whatever I've got, God, I offer to you. So we offer those to God right now. So let's pray. Loving God, you are an amazing creator. You have created every person who is listening to this and every person in the world. You've created the whole planet. You have created us as a beautiful web that has the potential to bring so much joy and so much hope. God, take our offerings. Take the tiny pieces of ourselves that we offer with you in frightened still voices. God, help us to join them together with others. May we be courageous to share those so that we can see the miraculous work you do through your spirit, where you multiply and you grow and you take those little things and turn them into big things. God, remind every one of us that we belong to something bigger, that your church is so much bigger than just the moments we have. So God, we now offer these things to you because we believe in your kingdom and we long to see it come. In Jesus' name, amen. Summer, are you ready? She's not ready, but she's okay because you don't have to have a perfect summer. Remember what we said, this was an experiment and it's okay to make mistakes and it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs, come somewhere and tell us what you've done and talk to us about how you've shared your gifts with us tonight. So I attempted a very quick attempt because, again, this was a very um, interesting process. <laughs> but I attempted to take the words that everybody had been talking about and putting them forward in a creative front. <laughs> so <laughs> it's not great, but I attempted what I could with the time that I had and with the intent of everybody. So <laughs> I tried to, I have a bunch of words in the background with some flowers and love and the gratitude and embracing that people were talking about. And so I've done hands to signify that embrace, that um, generosity, that grace, and that warmth that everyone has been talking about or put down. I had that love that people were talking about and the flowers and the nature and the landscape that people were describing. And in the background, I have lovely, joyful colours to bring all that together. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. I was hoping, can I steal it for the Pulse office? Sure. Unless, I'll unless I, do I have to fight Taramara for it? No. It'd be, oh, it'll be cash. <laughs> I, we'll I'll, have, try, I'll sign it for you. Oh, thanks. That would be great. We would love that. So uh, to kind of conclude our service, uh, part of us being together is that we're not just blessed to be able to enjoy that experience ourselves. God calls us to bless the world. And so, John, are you going to come up as well? We're going to, now, we're not, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to sign, peace be upon you. We've kind of been practicing it, but I don't know if we're going to get this very well. So we're going to do it first because we want to bless you. So we're going to offer a, a blessing of peace be upon you, and then I'll talk some more about it, okay? Do you remember how it goes? Yes. Yeah, so start off like that. Yeah, it starts like that, and then ha hands peace. out, I think. 
peace be upon you. Sorry to people who know sign language better than what we do, but we really wanted to have a physical way of being able to share that. You can check out how to do that online. We would encourage that. Um, so our hope tonight was that you might actually video yourself doing a blessing, being able to go like, peace be upon you to someone else. We might not have got that right, but you get the Oops. intention. Video, check it out. Video yourself. Send it to someone that you want to send peace to. And, or just let send it out in the world. Let's put it up on our social medias, Insta, whatever is your thing. Put it out there um, as a way of all of us being able to share God's peace. So as you go, may God's peace and blessing be upon you. May it bring you hope and joy as you move into this next week. And may that joy become infectious to the world around you. May you remember how beloved you are to God. May you follow the ways of Jesus in which way to go forward in your life. And may you know the companionship of the Spirit in all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. One more thing. Oh, one more thing. John T's got one more thing. One last thing before we finish. Um, as part of our offering tonight, um, one of our current HSC students, who doesn't wish to be named, which is fine, um, instead of receiving gifts, they um, wanted to suggest um, that we give to some sort of charity as a way of uh, passing that blessing on. Um, and the charity that we chose as part of our, part of our offering tonight, if you... Um, that's something that you want to do, um, we decided that this week we were going to uh, choose the MND Association of New South Wales, which you can find online. Um, as part of our offering tonight, if that's something you feel called to give to, um, we invite you to do that as well. And that's it. We will go on to our outro and see you next week. Uh, oh yeah, Summer, come over here. So put it on the front of this so it doesn't move. There we go. Am I in? Beautiful. <laughs> you need to oh, keep still. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> <laughs>